Yes. Bless. Bless, bless, bless. Nice. Yeah, lovely. I just want to say hi. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hello, mate. Cheers for the work you've done for me at school. Kindly, of course. Yeah, in fact, that's what I really want to do. I really want to give someone a shout out um, that's done really well. So lovely for that. Just thanking me for the work that we've done at school. Yeah. It's quite disturbing, isn't it? Knowing that you... My bad. It's quite disturbing knowing that you've been putting in work for so many years and um, you just see uh, more and more young people being killed on our streets. And there's no change. It's really quite, really quite painful, isn't it? Okay, no, I'm still here. Um, so it's quite, a, it's, it's, it's really, really sad and very, very painful. Um, like I couldn't, I couldn't watch some of these videos that I've been going about with, uh, with the youths. Um, just, uh, I, I just kept thinking about the parents, what they must be going through, that these videos are circulating about their youth and one of them just got, um, just literally just pushed through. It's like you're watching wild animals. Uh, we've, we've, we've reverted to becoming like wild animals. Um, <clears throat> a lot of our youths on the, on the roads, it's deep. Um, but I wanna give a shout out to a youth that I've been working with uh, named Kane. I'm gonna post, I'm gonna post his profile just so everyone can try and support him, just give him a bit of support. I don't want to talk about his business and what he's been through, that's for him to do. But I will say, he's had a tough road. Like, um, you know, he's been through He's been through a lot and I met him when I was running one of the 12 week programs at a school. So I'm really doing this to give Kane a big shout out. I'm so proud of him. He's gone through a lot, like depression, loads of different stuff. He's been in the wrong company, moving with the wrong man then. And he's come to the point where he's focused. Um, you know, I've always encouraged him and believed in him. So I just want to remind parents that when their youths are going through stuff, um, don't, don't give up. Don't ever give up, because I've always shared with Kane the same message bruv you're a king you're gonna do this but just support him through the whole process so to see Kane at this point in his life where he's trained as a personal trainer he's doing what he loves we've had those conversations we've had things where we you know talking to him about planning putting together a, a life plan for himself and just seeing him execute that and do all what it takes, because because all I can do is just be there. You know, there's this saying, when the student is ready, the master appears. And so it doesn't matter how good the master is, if the student ain't ready, then there's gonna be no change. So it's really about Kane and the work that he's put in to make that change in his life. And I wanna encourage young people to get focused, like you really don't know how long you, you, we've got down here. We don't know and don't waste time. Like I can't impress upon everybody enough the value of life, the value that your life has. Um, I've been quite quiet this week. <clears throat> I haven't said much, I haven't posted much, nothing but um, I think I've been encouraged to do this because I, it's only about somebody else. It's about 
it's about this young man and like I get really excited when I see people who know that their life's a mess know that it's difficult been struggling know they've been hanging around with the wrong influence want that change struggle to make it happen and we've connected we've kept that connection and from the 12-week program and now my man's qualified as a personal trainer so people support him i'm gonna post i'm gonna do a post with his link and even the picture is going to show you a bit of the journey. The, you know, a picture tells, says a thousand words. Yeah, speaks a thousand words. So you'll be able to see what I saw when I saw the picture. <clears throat> we just want to keep supporting, helping young people to live their best lives now. We see what's going on out there. Um, and I, I, trust me, I'm not sitting down quiet. You might see me not posting and not saying much, but I'm working on this. I've always come into this with the belief that we can kill this poison. We can, we got the medicine, the communities, the government, like everybody, the media, everyone has to play their part to deal with this, this whole, this is an epidemic, this is a pandemic where we're losing young people. I will never ever um, accept that and get used to that and um, get desensitized that our young people are killing young people they don't see each other as you know people to have a laugh with and to holler up on the road they see each other like as ops as they say imagine that ops that's ops and it's just another young person just like you we actually don't we actually look at somebody else because and we attach a postcode to other people's lives and young people aren't seeing each other as young people they're not seeing themselves in another young person they're seeing ops um <clears throat> they're seeing somebody who they want to eliminate like like this is down to us, and I've I've got I've got real serious ideas that I wanna that I wanna implement and that I will. Everyone knows here what I'm like. I don't I'm not a talker. I just do. I get things done. Um, and we have to tackle this. We have to grab the the snake of of knife crime by the by the neck by the head. Let's grab it and take charge of it. And this is gonna take all of us playing our part. We have to change the way we think. We have to change community mindsets about grassing and snitching and keeping people in our community who, there's always someone who knows who carries knives and there's always people that know who are the man them that are doing badness but we keep them in our community because of this thing called snitch and we can't snitch. What, if someone troubles a you and pedophiles, ped pedos on a you, you know, you're not gonna snitch because that's snitching. Like, that, does that even make sense? And how's that any worse than taking someone's life? Like, don't snitch. Do you know that Hanad, the guy, when, when Hanad was dealing with my son, did you know that's what he said? He said, he said, don't snitch. After he stabbed my son, he said to the other man, them, don't snitch. How mad is that? That's what he was concerned about. Not my son dying on the street, but that everybody around who saw it didn't snitch on him. That was his focus. That's how deep this is. Wow. That's how deep this is. You know what else I found out? You know those police that are outside school? There was one right there. Can you believe that? There was a, there was a police outside my son's school when my son was breaking up the fight. Who should have been breaking up that fight then? Should it have been my son breaking up the fight? Or should it have been the police? I asked 
I found this out recent, like, because I'm really trying to find out what's what's going on, and I found out that the, the police one was there. The police one was there. Didn't do nothing. Yeah, that that's deep, man. So the mindset of our youths is, um, I think, I think every parent needs to be having these conversations with their young person, every single one of them. And then like, knowing who are your brethren, you know, like really build a real, have a real conversation. You know, allow the phones and all of that. Just sit down and talk with your youths. Um, I really believe to deal with this, we've got to tackle this knife crime on all levels because government are saying nothing like, we're seeing atrocious murders and the government are saying nothing. No one's speaking about it. No one's saying I'm abhorred that our children are dying in the streets. Hyde Park, why are you going Hyde Park armed? Why are you coming out in a nice summer's day armed? gonna post up Kane's Kane who's done so well uh, we gotta celebrate our youths when they've realized that they were on this thing and they've changed their mindset they've come away from thinking negative and made something of their self so let's support Kane I'm gonna post up his thing and you know I just hope people can support him he's doing personal training maybe somebody out there wants a personal trainer and they can jump on it with Kane um, yeah I just want to say yo to everyone have an awesome Friday wait a sec who's this Paul Bryden <laughs> request to come in Paul Bryden we say P come in bro yeah um, just want to big up my boy really um, Kane and just wish you a great Friday. Um, hope you're having a really good time. We send Zoe Bryden. One well, other thing, yeah? Bullying. Like, I'm really concerned. I I had to recently go and um, visit. Somebody invited me to go and see their friends who they're really worried about, yeah? So no, no. A I'm just giving this. I'm just giving this quick story. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Children, love, love, love. I'm just giving this story, here, Paul, yeah, Paul, about this. This bullying. Let me just talk about the bullying. Yeah. Um. So, so. No, Alice, I'm on the underground. I'll phone you after. I'll phone you no after. doubt. Cool, bruv. One love. Mark, I love you. Inspire me, man. Yeah, bro. Man, love, love to you, bruv. And the famo, yeah. Look at the little prince. <laughs> the little He's the little prince. prince. Say, say Mark, prince, say Mark. Say Mark. Easy champ. Say Mark, say hello. <laughs> he don't care Listen, about that. Let the phone man off. enjoy his own screen. Phone me though, because I need you. I need to talk to you. Yeah, bro. It's all right, man. I'm here. I, know. I love you, Mark, man. Thank you. Thank you yeah, bro. I love you. I love Every you, bro. time, bro. Every oh, time. Man, love, you, love you. So, um, so yeah, that's just one of the individuals that I've just been supporting and, and helping building friendship with breaking cycles, addictions, everything. Um, yeah, so Paul's making leaps and bounds. He's moving forward positively. But um, I'm talking about bullying here, yeah? And bullying is getting really peak in schools because... This man that I met, I never knew before, his friend invited um, him to come and meet me. And his daughter was bullied so badly that she decided to take her own life. And she done it in the house. Can you imagine he had to, he going up in a, your daughter's bedroom and seeing her hanging and he's had to pull her down 
listen, man, listening to this guy um, and just seeing that, the pain in his face and the grief, you know, oh, broken, broken soul. And it's very, very difficult to be in these situations where people have asked you to come and play a, a part because they believe that you can play a positive role in helping them go through what they're going through. Um, yeah, that, that was really hard, but I just want to share with you about the bullying. I think that's a top thing to address and even talk to our own children about. Parents, talk to your own children about how they address others, how they make other children feel, and how serious putting other kids down, picking on them, making them feel less than, because we don't know the psychology, we don't know the mindset of what other people are going through, so we don't know what we're driving them towards when our children, when children, and it, and it is our children as well, because, you know, it's someone's children. So we've got to talk to our children about how they're affecting the world, the legacy that they are leaving. Yes, Sharuk, good to see, good to, um, <laughs> good to see you on this, babe. Um, you know, the legacy, because that's what we're leaving every day, and our kids are doing that with their relationships with peers, teachers, you know, everybody that they meet. We're, we're, we're creating a legacy about our life. And if our children are picking on other people, like I heard it was like a, a regularly between up to 15 children, mixture of girls and boys, just running this girl, putting her down online, at school, um, horrible, until she hangs herself in her own bedroom at home. Ah, it's so painful. And now that's caused this ripple effect. And then the school is not doing anything, but all the children at the school know who the bullies are. Ah, it's just, it's just horrible. It really is. Um, so little things like this, I'm just, I'm just bringing this up. Let's talk to our, our children about these things. You know, who are they at school? What impact are they leaving on others? Because I always... Um, you know, I always talk about this with Kyan, and I bring up Kyan because, you know, after he was killed, there was so much things that I had found out about him as a person. And I realized the power of him as an individual was the fact that he kind of cared. He cared about people, and he didn't use his strength. He didn't use his reputation to hurt others. He, he used it to protect other people and to defend the weaker and um, to encourage others not to violate other people and to live their best lives, to live their best lives now. Um, so I love that. And I just want to encourage other young people to do the same. And parents, talk to your young people about who they are and about the impact that they have because if they've got issues and they're hurting they could be picking on other children so they could feel better about themselves and this is what's this is what's happening in life you know our children are picking on other children to feel better about themselves when they're the ones hurting and they're hurting other people in their lives I always ask my nephew and I had that with him this talk is a big thing needs to be done well said if we don't ask them and see signs some children won't talk exactly let's bring up the conversations that need to be had lovely pink thank you for that we need to bring up these conversations carers parents uncles grandparents all of us you know um just talk about these things and you know inadvertently do it share your story of maybe if you got bullied what it done to you how it made you feel and how terrible it was and the impact that when other children do that and inadvertently you're showing that young person you're not telling them don't bully boom 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 you're just kind of speaking about the subject and it makes 
young people think. And they all might think, wow, like I do that. I, I violate these guys because they're younger or, you know, they're weaker than me. So I try and exploit them and I feel good about it because everyone's laughing and, you know, I feel like I'm the man or I'm the girl, you know, and, and girls do this hard. Like my guy that was, um, that just came on but didn't say much, Paul, that I've been supporting and mentoring for a while now, he's, um, his daughter uh, or, or his girl's daughter, um, is it Molly? She, listen, and, and I said to him, look, I'll come down to school. I'll come down to school, not to bully anyone, not to play the bad guy, but to be able to show people and speak to them about the damage that they're causing, to be able to meet people and speak to their heart so they could see. Plus, schools, you know, they've, they've got a lot. Um, they've got a lot to answer for. Because schools aren't doing what they're supposed to do. This school where the guy's daughter killed, uh, where the guy's daughter killed herself and was getting bullied, they said they've got a policy, but didn't keep to the policy. They've ignored the children that have been doing the bullying and swept it under the carpet. Um, like, there's a serious stuff that's going on right now. And, and we don't know if it's our child being bullied. We don't know if it's our child bullying. But either way, we need to be able to to bring up our child to know that these things are so dangerous, way more dangerous than you think, that we're just taking the mickey. You know, it's like the kids aren't made like how we was back in the day. Like, you know, everyone would agree with that. Like, you know, we were so much more, like, responsible. We wasn't around tablets and computers and games we was always socializing and we was always outdoors and playing and we built a fortitude about us because our parents you know brought us up to be able to i learned how to care for the home clean be responsible from really early on so by the time i ran away from home at 15 and i got my flat at 17 i was looking after my flat as if i was a, a grown man that had had ownership of a premises for years, you know, wiping the whole place down, taking care of my bills, being responsible as if I've been doing this for time, but it's different now. You know, kids are more protected and looked after and, you know, we don't want them to go through what we went through and we protect them a lot, which has made a lot of, um, they've made a lot of our children quite moist when it comes to taking care of business for want of a better word, using the street words. Um, so we have to we have to kind of strengthen their fortitude and their character and their mindset by letting them know that the things that are happening now, kids are killing themselves. The suicide rate for kids under a certain age is way high. It's just gone up. The mental health issues with children has gone up. It's gone crazy. Um, so yeah, yeah, waving, bless. Bless, um, bless for those that have joined. I'm just talking about a few things that I haven't been on 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 all week. Basically, I had to get away and have a break after that campaign. So I'm just talking about a few things that have been hurting me this week that I've been creating a plan for to move forward and address um, all the all the children that's been stabbed and killed, um, and the videos going around and um, just talking about bullying and um, sharing what it was like, how hard it is for me in the work that I'm in on a regular basis, meeting people, mentoring the youths, um, and just asking you to encourage you to look at my post that I'm going to put out after this, where I'm encouraging people just to support Kane, follow him, like an 18-year-old young man that's turned his life around um, and that has, um, has qualified himself now as a personal trainer, and I just want to encourage people to just encourage your children to do what they love doing. Cain loves exercising. And I said, why not motivate people to do what what you love to do and um, teach them how to do it? You know, be a personal trainer. Now he's qualified. So I'm over the moon, really happy about him and that. And uh, just, wanna, just wanted to share that with you, really. Um, yeah, 
Just wanted to share that with you and just wish you an absolutely awesome Friday. I was glad to come back. It's nice to come back on here and share with you. I haven't done my my lives for the last two Sundays. I've just felt that um, I really need to take some time out for me. I talk about mental health. I talk about well-being. But am I taking time out for well-being myself? Am I doing the things that I'm talking to you about? And I realize that I'm so driven. I, you know, I, I want to encourage and inspire and help people so much that you could forget yourself and the next minute there's burnout. So I think this Sunday for Insta Live, we're going to talk about burnout. So tune in 7 o'clock, a reflection and inspiration with myself. And uh, let's talk about burnout because uh, a lot of us burn ourselves out. We want to do so much for everybody else. But what are we doing for ourselves? Um, and I think that's an important subject to discuss. A break for yourself is good, no doubt, Pink. Totally agree with what you're saying. Yes, my love. So I might as well have just had a chat with Pink because we just have a <laughs> we just have a one to one here. Much love to everyone. Go and have an absolutely awesome Friday. Um, and just my last point. I hope you are like, I hope you like the poem I sent you and the family. Definitely chill out. They need you. Or I probably do like the poem you sent me, but I just need to realize who it is that's sending me. Thanks for your contribution to the youth. No doubt there's a lot more coming. And um, reading that just made me forget um, um, what I was going to say. My last point. And I said, I've got one last point. What was it again? Um, yeah, that's it. Do you know one thing I remember when um, when my, my son got killed? You know, it's horrible being in this house. All you hear is so much grief and noise and, and uh, you hear a lot of questions. And the main question was, why us? Why Kyan? Why did God take Kyan? Okay. Um, yeah. So I hear that a lot. And I wondered to myself, wait a minute. How come God gets the bum deal or he gets the blame all the time for stuff? But I don't really hear people praising him when things are going well. I don't hear people just blaming God for all the good stuff that's going on in their life. I don't hear that. I hear the word luck. I hear all kind of stuff. Well, I don't often hear everybody blaming God for all the great stuff going on in their life, going on journey safely, their children coming back home safely every day and so much things that go on in life. But the minute something hits the fan, it's God's fault. But why did he do this and why did he make this happen? So I heard that recently from someone. and. Um, because they lost a loved one. And I said, well, I said, you know what? Because their child took their life. I said, how would you feel if you were sitting, you was a passenger to a driver, and the driver's your friend, and your friend decided, I'm going to take my life, and he drives his car off some cliff, bridge, whatever and dies, he chose to do that. But you were sitting next to him, and the family blamed you. The family blamed you. Why didn't you pull the steering wheel? Why didn't you steer it in another direction? Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you stop him? You had the power, you were right there. How would you feel? You wouldn't feel that that was rightly placed blame, would you? Because I've realized this with God. Not even God messes with our free choice. God governs us out of a government of love. And love defines the fact that you have to have choice. You have to have choice. You can't say you love someone, you force in their freedom of choice. Let them choose. 
So God has created us and given us freedom of choice. We can turn our backs on him. We don't have to believe in him. We don't have to care about him. We don't have to give him no respect or love. Oh, look, what a great creator. Yeah, that's what he's done. And then we now go blaming him when during the life that we lead, we don't even give him no praise. We don't even holler at him. We don't even give him no credence. But the minute something goes wrong, we suddenly bring up his name. Before that, some of us, we don't even believe in him. And the first time we start talking about him like this is when something bad happens. Um, when someone takes their life, that must break God's heart because he gifted them with life. And it's sad that that's the choice that they made out of speaking to someone, getting some help. And that's really painful. And it's a really um, touchy subject to go on because everyone wants to tread of, around that softly. But the truth is, it's, it's just as tough to deal with as I have to accept that someone stabbed my son. The person has to accept that that person in their life that they loved, maybe their child decided to commit suicide. That's not God's fault. He didn't take anybody. It wasn't that young person's time. God bless you guys, man. <laughs> I'm supposed to be inspiring you and lifting you up. Um, yeah, not enough gratitude. Every day I'm grateful for this air that I breathe and the life that I have. I'm not owed nothing. I'm not owed anything. So every day is a gift. I'm owed nothing. So I will be grateful. I will be grateful and I will put my best foot forward. Do the same, guys, and see what life gives back to you because what you're giving to life. God bless you guys. I'm out. Workers need to take yes, yeah. Trust me, I'll be addressing, I'll be addressing a lot of things. Rappers, um, you know, they do, they do, and I understand them. I'm not knocking rappers. I understand them. They're trying to make, they're trying to make their money, and the systems created it where it's easier to rap about negative stuff and sell than it is to rap about positive stuff and sell. So that means. That's got a lot to do with us because who are the buyers? Who are the listeners? Imagine if we did not listen to garbage lyrics and music that was putting down our women, that was glorifying violence, that was glorifying knife crime, and just, just glorifying negativity. Imagine if we thought, no, I'm not listening to that. But they put a beat on it. Now we want to be nodding and dancing because they put a beat on some negative lyrics. If someone spoke those lyrics to you, would you find them inspirational? They just come and spoke to you in the same lyrics that they speak in music. The negativity that they speak in a lot of these songs, and they've got how much, how much views? Who, who is that? Who's false that? That's what I'm saying with this whole thing. For society to change, everyone's got to look in the mirror. Everyone's got to take responsibility. Now, I'm going to do everything within my power. I'm going to go and see who I've got to see. I'm going to go and talk to the man them on the, in the underworld, the criminal, the criminal world, the man them that's running things that I've got old, that I've got youngers underneath them. I'm going to do everything I can because we need one rule and one rule only. Do not kill children. Do not kill children. Stop killing. Oh, man. Man, I tell you. Stop killing children. Children killing children. No way. We should not be having this. No one should be having this. Everybody should be outraged. If everyone's outraged that there's a van going around and they're looking to pick up little kids. It's no different. We should be outraged that kids are carrying knives. Let's take back our streets. 
Let's take back our homes because it's families that make up communities. So let's take back our families, first of all. Let's take back control of our children in the home. And you'll see that out on the street. And I know some children lead two different lives, but let's work it from the home. Let's get this right. Let's heal the hearts of our children. Let's start killing all of the areas that have created and made this popular culture. Everyone has to sing from their same hymn books. Influencers, um, athletes, entertainers, everybody from the same hymn book. Okay? Now, I'm on it. I'm doing my thing. Um, and everyone will see, like they always do, that I'm doing my thing. Um, and you can't do it on your own because the change is going to come from everybody. But at least I can put that belief in everybody that we can kill knife crime. We can kill this. This whole culture, this whole mindset, we can kill it. We can kill the mindset of snitching around knife crime. Listen, you better tell somebody that guy's got a knife because you're just as responsible as the person that used the knife that you said nothing. You said nothing. You saw the knife. You saw him. What? What? Isn't that the same as you're just not as responsible? If you saw a guy trying to kiddie fiddle, and trouble a kid, would you stand by and say nothing? No, you wouldn't. So what's the difference between that and somebody with a knife? Our children have to speak up. And I'm saying, if you don't want to go to feds, go to other people that you know can help this person. Come to KPF. Go to Go to Farron, who goes and picks up knives, and he can contact, and we can chat about going further. He'll take the knife. We'll help take the knife from the mindset, okay? So everyone does their bit and plays their part. But we need to kill this whole thing in our community about, you know, just snitching. Like, seriously, we're keeping killers in our community because of this snitching. We're kill keeping murderers. And then we're getting upset when we're seeing people getting killed. We've got to change the way we think about stuff, you know? And I think that things will change when we change them and when we start thinking differently. We're going to get the same results if we don't change stuff in our house, in our heart, in our mind. We're going to get the same results that we're getting now. Can you imagine what it's going to be like for our children's children? If our children are being stabbed, I need to, I don't want to break this whole mindset. I want our children to go from area to area without fear. I want parents to be able to allow their children out without fear. Because across the globe, we put out the message from the media, the message uh, from celebrities, the message from everybody out there, the message. No more killing of our youths. And uh, what we need to do is set up. Oh, man. Some guys, man, trust me. I'm, I'm really going to, I'm going to put some heat on the government. I'm going to put some heat on all the people that are talking about uh, or have responsibility to make change and are doing nothing. I'm calling everyone out. I'm calling everyone out. You can do something. Why aren't you doing it? Our children, we're outraged when pedos are out. Outraged we are. We literally want to lynch them. I'm just saying that I want to help the children that feel that are carrying knives and moving like a pack of hyenas on one individual is the way to live. You've, you've put yourself down to an animal level. You don't, you don't even have a mind anymore. You've, you've, you've cut it off, you've turned off the switch and you're not using all the powerful gifts that God's given you. 
your mind to think for yourself. Is this what I want to do? Is this what I want to cause? This is, let's do this. Let's, um, let's make this change. Need to get back to the days where communities are helping to raise children. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We're helping each other. We're not looking down at the mum whose boy is not misbehaving right, not behaving right. We're actually seeing what we can do to support her. She's on her own. She's having struggles. The boy ain't listening. There's enough man in the ends. Knock on the door. Do you need any support? Would you, you know, maybe I could take him football or, or something. Do you know what I mean? Massive. That's a massive deal. Uh, everyone's trying to focus on tackling the thing. Your, your stuff, your power is right there in your ends that you can help somebody in your own area. You can help someone. You know, you can help that mum struggling ox. You know? Yeah, this right here. Well said. Yeah. Government are showing they don't care. Well, they've done that for years before Kyan got killed and they're still doing it. So at least they're consistent. Do you know what I'm saying? At least they're consistent. Um, so we know what to expect from them. But we can make them act by us making change. We shame them and stop voting for the same people that do not care about your children. Why did everybody vote Sadiq Khan back in when he talked about knife crime, what he was going to do and done absolutely nothing. He built his whole thing on the back of that and made all these promises and mugged us off. And we're the mugs that voted him back in. So what do you think he's going to do? Why would he care? He's laughing at us, laughing. He don't give two hoots. Well, you vote me back in. You see how I didn't do nothing. You see how I didn't keep my promises. You see there's no leadership qualities in me. Politicians are focused on getting back in power. They're not focused on you and they're not focused on me. And they certainly ain't focused on our children. Okay? They're not. So, um... This is some radical times, you know, we are living in. <laughs> some radical times we're living in, you know. And we need to wake up. We really do. You know, when we wake up and realize that the power's in our hands, we've just given it to a, a, a small group of people to govern us. And if we're not happy with the way that they're governing us, and it looks like they're bullying us, and it looks like it's bordering on tyranny, then what are we going to do about it? It looks like they're taking away our human rights. Then what are we going to do about it? It looks like these guys don't care about us around here. These guys aren't even reporting these things that are happening, but they're reporting some celebrity who's changed their brief or who's done something stupid or had a divorce or they're reporting that. Who says, listen, we're all going through these things in life. We don't want to hear about that. Report the stuff that's important to people in their life, that ain't. We got so much power and we relinquish it. We relinquish it because they've, they've kind of created this, this, this system and way that we need to follow. So we're just running with it. We're going with it like, yeah. Okay, they, they said this, they said that. And we become robots ourselves. We don't think, well, you know, I didn't ask for that, you know. And you hear most of the people you speak to say the same thing. Well, we don't want that. We don't like that, you know, but we don't have a voice. So who, what was the point of voting somebody in when we haven't got a voice? Um, yeah, well, was, was your biggest inspiration? Who was your biggest inspiration as a kid? <laughs> This is going to surprise you. This is going to surprise you. Who was my biggest inspiration as a kid? King David. <laughs> You're like, who the hell is King David? 
<laughs> King David, read your manual. Your manual has got some incredible individuals. I do not need Spider-Man. I do not need Superman. I do not need Daredevil. None of these brothers. Because I read about a guy that really lived on the planet that was serious, focused, committed, had wonderful leadership qualities, cared about justice. Yeah, made mistakes like everybody else does, but was a man that respected who he was made from and his, uh, his, his position as a king to serve the people. He was one of my greatest inspirations as a kid. The leadership qualities in King David, he was a Hebrew, um, yeah, he was a Hebrew, and he was an awesome, awesome man. Read, read his story, read his story. Um, yeah, often just kind of the outsider that nobody kind of looked up to and thought he was going to become anyone. You know, but we're all here for a reason. God has a plan for all of us. And he discovered that his was to be the king of Israel. And um, one of the greatest kings in their history. So, yeah. So that was, um, and probably as I'm talking to you about it and answering that question, I'm kind of thinking, well, the way I talk and the things that I admire in life, yeah, it kind of makes sense, really, doesn't it? That I look to this guy and I talk about leadership. I talk about qualities. I talk about character. Um, so, yeah, that, that's who it was. All the setbacks, what kept you going, uh, going in life, and what was your motive? Oh, wow. One of the things that kept me going was I know that I'm on a journey. I know I'm on a journey and my journey isn't finished. So the stuff that happened in my life couldn't have come to finish me because I'm still here. I'm still here. Um, so one of the things that kept me going is the fact that I need to see this through. What, what am I going to learn from this? Where is this going to take me? So I, I always kind of look at myself and see what this is going to do to me. Like I was intrigued at who I was going to become after this, after my son. You know, I knew I weren't going to be the same again. Um, I knew I weren't going to be the same. My purpose, my purpose is my motive. My purpose. I, I believe that with all our different gifts that we each have, we've all been sent to make some level of change on this planet, to impact someone. And without us, that person m m might never be impacted and we might never change the life the way that we were supposed to if we hadn't been here. Um, so one of my motives is, is what I talked about earlier, is that life is a gift. I must live this. I must, I must continue to drive forward carry this pain even when I don't even think I can um, yeah even when I don't think I can that's why when Russell Howard asks me how do I how do I do this how do I keep going I said minute by minute hour by hour day by day week by week Yeah, just live, be present. Yeah, that's right. God's plan. Be present. Too much of us, we're here, but we're not here. We're here, we're somewhere else. We're like a week ahead. We're like, 
in another country. We're like next door. We're like anywhere else, but actually present with what's going on, people around us, and technology's made it easier for us not to be present because we've got so much more distractions now. When TV came, that was bad enough as it is because it was just like, we turn goggle-eyed over this one you know, central point in our home that they could project their thinking, they could project everything that they wanted to into our subconscious. Now they've got multiple ways of infiltrating our minds and placing in our subconscious whatever it is that they want. So before we realize we're doing and thinking and speaking and acting in a way and don't even realize that we've been influenced by this screen, what's coming through this screen. Our belief systems, you know, have been influenced by this. Uh, really, really, really powerful. And we, we overlook it, you know, it's entertainment. You know, I, I'll share something with you, yeah? Like everybody else, I, I you know, you watch violent stuff and whatever and, you know, it was like whatever. You see someone get stabbed, shot. Okay, they're stabbed. Then you know they're shot. When my son got stabbed and killed, listen, I saw and it was drama, and it was entertainment, but I saw stabbing and killing in a complete different way. I actually saw it like you're taking life. My son's life's taken. This is you're taking life. Like it hit me differently, and I was very uncomfortable. And couldn't just sit there for a good while and and see it and watch it. You know, it was like it, it I tell you, I, I tell you this stuff like that the deeper pain you go through is a deeper awakening that you can get if you're seeking it, if you don't focus on just the grief and the pain. If you're whatever you're seeking in life, you're gonna find it. And I wanted whatever this situation had to bring me I, I wanted whatever this was going to elevate me to and teach me i wanted it um i wanted it so i actually i actually i actually learned and elevated myself in my thinking in life um let me in let's chat okay cool yeah that's a request to be in the live cool Let's have you in. No, she she rang me and told me she's in check. There you are, my my brother. Your your um request is that's why I just want to say come over here. Yes, my brother. Finish what you're saying first, and then. No, mom, no, my man, I'm good. I, I sometimes I just feel like I'm just I'm going into one. I'm just yabbing right. on. Bro, to be honest, I've watched a lot of your lives and what you do is commendable, man. How you, how you, like, how you deal with that situation, like, it must have taken years to get to that stage, but it's commendable, you know Shall I, mean? I tell you the honest truth? Shall I tell you the honest truth? Yeah. It took a moment. Yeah, but moment, like, when? When in your life? Because okay. that moment could have been okay. 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 your life, you get me? I'll, I'll tell you the moment. I'll tell you the moment. I'll tell you the moment. Yeah. There was a moment on the journey. Yeah. That changed everything. And I didn't become who I am now. Yeah. Right then. But at that moment, when I made a decision. Yeah. It's, it's like when an alcohol, an alcoholic decides, I ain't drinking no more. Yeah. Now, most probably, he, he, he's going to drop off and have a drink. But at that moment, at that decision that he made, that's yeah. what changed everything. And in the end, he was able to, to overcome being an alcoholic. Yeah. And I'm just saying that that was the best way I could explain what happened to me. Like, I had a moment, and if I explain all the, all the yeah, situation yeah. around it, but it was a real conversation with God. Like, I, I spoke to to the man it's like yeah, yeah. listen like here's here's what time it is i can't deal with this yeah and when i said i give it i give up because i knew i was trying to do it in my strength i'm a dad i'm a strong man this and this yeah. and that i'm gonna do this 
but I was just ruining myself. So when I humbled myself and said, I need your help, something happened to me. Something happened physically, emotionally, mentally, and I knew that was the day that my change began. Hence why I said to you, it, it was a moment, but we know everything's a process, yeah. but it was a moment, King. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's amazing still, you know what I mean? It's like, to be fair, that's probably like to do with your character as well. You must have been someone that thought you could get through life without assistance or help or whatever. You must have just been a tough guy inside. And that moment, yeah. your shell broke. Yeah. So yeah. once your shell broke, things started penetrating you that weren't penetrating you before, so. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. There's, there's levels. And I got hit with the deepest level. Yeah. So I realized I was nothing. I couldn't even save my son. Like, who, who am I? Like, I, could, I couldn't even save my boy. So you oh, feel okay. like... I see what you're saying. So the power, was saying? The, power, the power that you had created within your own self was robbed of you. So you had this, this power that you told yourself, I'm this person. But then that That's broke, right. broke down the person that you had believed your whole life to be or That's the correct. position you was in. Sort mm -hmm. of like, you know what I mean? I get it, I get it, mate. Yes. I'm breaking yeah. it down in my own way, like, you know what I mean? No, it's a good way. Yeah, yeah. But no, I wanted to talk about knife crime and just, like, things like yeah. that because, like, it's got to a point where it's just, like, me, personally, I'm from Hackney, yeah? And I, yeah. Lived, I, lived, I lived that life. I didn't, I didn't kill no one, you know what I mean? I went, yeah. to jail, I went to jail for grievous bodily harm, you get me? Um, yeah. In 2005, when I was, like, 19, I came out when I was, like... Mm -hmm. 21 or something like that but yeah. I was a young man that didn't know how to process pain I so it was like my pain now becomes your pain because I don't know how to process it yes so it's That's almost it. like it's almost like what you give to me I'm giving to everyone yeah. 10 times more so it's like yes. if I get punched not if not 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 saying I I'm got I've done this, but if I get punched, I, I, feel, you. I feel like shooting. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's the feeling that. Yeah. So you punching yeah. me, it tenfolds yeah. within me. Tenfolds within the, the young man. Out there. They don't know how to process pain. They've never. They've always told to be tough. Toughen up, man. Yeah. Hold, we 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 we, yeah. we, yeah. we 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 crying for blood. You're you moving like a pussy, yeah. fam. Man, yeah. to, yeah. like man tried to talk about their emotions in the hood. And try and be like, yo, fam, you know, I feel depressed. Nah, you're moving like a waste, man. Yeah, that's it. Like, so you will never open up again. Never. Yeah, so you don't yeah. know how to process things, you get me? But when you get older, there's a thing that I like to refer to. It's like bomb disposal squad. Yeah? <sighs> so things happen. There's going to be, like, things inside of you that happen. But you need yeah. to be a bomb disposal squad. So you need to let it implode within and then let it come out with productivity. So all the pain you feel, you deal with it inside. It comes inside, yeah, it's hard to deal with, but then you've got to have little ways that work for you. For me, I put on jazz music, calms me down. I go in the bath, I put candles on. I've got a little foot spa thing. I just treat myself nicer than how I feel. So if I feel rough, I treat myself better. You get me? So I try to bring myself back to feeling good again because it's hard to sometimes you're in life it's like we don't have five minutes no more yeah. back in the day we had five minutes now if you sit down you feel guilty you could be yeah. doing something else with that five minutes things have changed back in the day there weren't so much traffic now everyone's trying to get it in there's no time for there's no time for you there's no time for you. there's no time for your wife, there's no time for your children. It's like, it's like, kids, man, leave me alone. I'm on the phone. Kids, I've got to send an email. Kids, I've got to do this. Yeah? So guess what? The kids feel neglected. The kids feel rejected. The kids are like, okay, you ain't got time for me. So guess what? I don't want to be the parent that ain't got time for my kids. So guess what? I'm going to get it in now. Quick, 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 quick. Because they, they never had time. You never had time. Some kids, bro, I'm not, bro, I don't think I'll, I probably did, but the fact that I can't remember means I didn't really go to the park with my dad to play football as much. Really? West Indian parents back in the day, you won't really catch them in the park with their kids. You'll catch the mum. But, uh... but us parents, we've evolved now. We've evolved. So you'll catch the Caribbean dad 
taking his kid to the park and doing silly things that he never used to do back in the day because he felt that neglect when he was a kid. So he's trying to be the change like us now. You can never, back in the day, you could diss black dads, but now you can't diss black dads. You can't. You can't. They're, they're stepping up to the plate big time. You get me? And if they're not stepping up to the plate, it could be a woman that's involved that's made that guy not be able to be in the life the way he wants to be. So it's not always up to the man. Sometimes the women are like... What made you... What, what, what was the point that helped you to be able to see some of the stuff you've been explaining Bro, that I'm kind 35. of shifted your mindset? I'm 35. I've got three kids. I've seen... I've seen... Um, I've been in a broken home. I've been to prison. I've been chased. I've been robbed. I've robbed people. I've... I've, I've I've, I've, I've run from the police. I've, I've chased the police. I've done, yeah. you know? So, like, I've got to the point now where all I've got is good to give because I've given out so much hatred. I've given out so much darkness. All I've got to... All I've got... I've given out all the darkness that I had. Yeah. And then yeah. what happened? The biggest transition for me was moving out my area. I left Hackney. I got E2 on my hand, yeah? Yeah, wow. That's because where I grew up, you get me? That's where I grew up, yeah. E2. Haggerston, Green, Dawson, London, Field, yes. Holly Street, yeah? It meant up. something to you at the time. Yeah, no, it was you thought that's was what, that was your belonging. E2. E2's not even that place. E2's not even a place yeah. that gets wrecked like that. Only like yeah. maybe say, 10, 15 years ago did E2 come on the map because a little kid. Come I went yeah. to prison and then I came out and there was a whole new squad that I never knew, the Western Road Crew. So they started putting E2 in, but and then E, like, E2, like, but when people... Me, I'm older E2, like, I'm, I'm not even yeah. older E2, I'm not even E2, like, a gang, but I'm, I'm yeah. older than the war, I'm older than the war. So when you're older than the war now, yeah, it becomes yeah. different, because now I can go to the, I can go through London Fields, I can go through Hoxton. Hoxton and London Fields have got war, but I'm older That's than right. the war. So, That's correct. So I've got a place in the war that I can pick, I can decide, and I can speak to him, and say, brother, what you're doing is wrong. And I can speak to him and say, well, brother, what you're doing is wrong. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I've been yeah. robbed. I've been robbed in the hood. And the people that robbed me, yeah. guess what? If I see them now, it is what it is. Because you know what? They, they, right. it's, it's character building. You robbed me. You made me f go and rob people because I thought, I'm a pussy. I used to go home and say to yourself, bro, I'm a pussy, bro. I'm a pussy. That's right. That's what happens Sleep. to young kids. Let me tell you something about mental health. Thank you. Let me tell you something Talk about it. mental health in little kids. Yes, when bro. When things happen to kids on road, what they do? I'm sitting in the yeah. bath and I'm going to myself, bro, I'm a pussy. I'm a pussy. Yeah? And I'm trying to convince myself that I'm a pussy because that wouldn't happen to me if I wasn't a pussy, bro. That's right. You get me? So That's now right. I have to That's convince myself. That's how the mind's speaking it. But now I have to convince myself that I'm not a pussy. Yes. Yeah. So now you've so got now to do this shit. Go out and I have to do something that's convincing me that I'm yeah. not a pussy. That could be chopping up a man, punching up a man, punching that's up a woman, anything it. that moves. That's as that's long it. as I prove to myself that I'm not, when I go in the bath at night and I'm sitting in the bath yeah. on my own and I'm soaking, because you know you reminisce yeah. in the bath. Well, like you reminisce when you're washing the dishes, you have them little thoughts. You're sitting in the bath and you're naked, innit? So you're really looking at yourself. Like every man will judge that's you. Like, like people see you on road and you've got your clothes on, but when you go in the bath, you could have a small willy and you're looking at yourself and you're going, blood, I'm not even that guy, bro. The bath <laughs> is the place. Yeah? Love it. Love so it. So the bath now, you're in the bath now and you've gone and stabbed someone. And when you go home that night, you're going to yourself, you know what? I'm a G fan. That's what I'm saying. I ain't no pussy. Them man are pussy. Fuck them man there. And then you've got to convince yourself that you're going to survive the beef with them. It's a map, bro. We've all got, I've got PTSD, 100%. I've never been to Iraq, but I've got PTSD. I get angry, I've got anger issues. I'm trying my best to get through my anger. I, brother, it's a deep, it, bro, it's never going to be easy. People have to want, you have to want to change, yeah? Like, I've got this on my hand as well, RBG, yeah? That's red, black, and green. That's the Marcus Garvey flag for the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, yeah? And it's also like something that Dead Prez re refers to as revolutionary but gangster. That's what I did when I was like 18 years old. So me, I've been in a certain mind frame from before anyway. But these yeah. kids have not even been where I'm at. So for them to get yeah. to where I'm at, it's going to take them probably 40 years. You get me? Because I was already there. But they got 40. 
it's deep stuff, man. It's deep. It's not easy, man. It is. Kids out there, they're actually trying to prove their self. Try, like, they're trying to prove to their souls that they're a man. Imagine you've got a mum, but no dad. Who's telling you that you're a man? How, who's showing you how to be a man? No one yeah, taught me. Exactly. No, no one, I ain't got no older brothers or no, no older cousins. So no one showed me how to chat to girl. No one showed me how to deal with man. That, you. No one told, told me. No one gave me the confidence to go and deal with the bullies. I had my mum. I had my mum telling me to walk away. So going through mum telling me to walk away because I'm my only son, and me wanting to fight these people because that's all I've got. Like when I go to school, men are gonna say, "Bro, you got punched up." Like you don't want that. So you, you like it's a mad battle, bro. It's a mad battle. And the best, all I can say to the fathers, all I can say to the fathers, yeah, is be there for your kids. Don't think it's about money. Your kid does not care if you come home with a bust down rolly. Your kid don't care. Your kid don't care if you got a chain. You know what my daughter calls it? Do you know what my daughter calls this? A zip. She calls it a zip. So man paid a thousand pounds for a zip, yeah? And that's what my daughter refers to it as. And she just plays with it like that. I say to her, do you want to wear it? She says, no. If I come home without the chain, she don't care. She's just going to go, daddy, where's your zip? She's not going to be like, oh my God, daddy, you got no chain. You can't be my daddy no more. I don't want to play with you. Bro, they don't See, care. Bro. They don't care bro, about the Bro, let me tell you something. Listen, man, I have had just my flat and I didn't even have a bed. I had a mattress. And I coached at the time. I think I must have had um, three, three of my children at the time, Tanisa, Kyan, and Jodeci. Okay. Bruh, we sometimes it was freezing in my flat because I didn't have the money for the electric and all that. Bruh, we just all huddled up in the bed. Like, my children had fun. Like, growing up with them was just fun and good times. When I listen to them talking, you know, young people, children have a different mindset different. than us. What's, what's, What's all stressful and whatever for us, youth can can enjoy that vibe because they don't know. Like, like me, I didn't even know we were broke and we were so poor yeah. growing up yeah. until when I yeah. went to school and everybody started teasing me about the, the shoes on my foot. Yeah, but guess <laughs> what? You know what yeah? Can I tell you something? You know all the guys that I know, yeah, that didn't have no shoes on their, their like the best one tens in school. Yeah, and they had like. Yeah. They had one shoes and in on uniform day they wouldn't really look that good. Do you know how well those brothers are doing now? They're doing now because they were driven to do well because they didn't have it when they were younger. They didn't, so they, they, they used that. They never had it on a plate to feel that yeah. um, that, that entitlement. Yes, yeah. They don't feel entitled. They know that yes. whatever they want, they've got to go and get it. You feel me? But what I say to the fathers is it's not only being in your kids' life, they don't care about jewelry and stuff like that. Like, try and build something that when your child is 11, 12, you can make him be a part of it. Yeah? Because yeah. the amount of children that I know have gained success through working for their fathers. And like, I know a 24 year old that I used to do scaffolding, like, years, years, years back, I used to do scaffolding. And there was this, this kid, he was white. So, so he died. I, I, yeah, he was white, yeah. So and his dad, his, dad, his, dad was a, um, his dad was a scaffolder and he, he worked with his dad. His dad was able to bring him in and basically schooled him, got him to his thing. And the guy was 24 and he had a mortgage. And I'm sitting back saying, bro, like, bro, like, like, if man had a dad that I could work for, I wouldn't need the roads. I wouldn't need, need the it. roads. That's it. I wouldn't need my friends like yeah. that much. I wouldn't yeah. rely on them for, for emotional yeah. support because I know I'm a responsible man. I'm getting money. Like, I need, yeah. to, be, I need to be up tomorrow morning. I need to go to bed. I need to make That's sure, it. I, like, it's building me up. Yeah. So it's like, and it's, it's within the home and your dad's going to give you, the, you have to sit there and have them lessons with them, them, them so, talk so, with your kids. So, so King, you know, King, yeah. I, I'm all about, I'm all about building an army right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's about, I'm linking up with people that understand the underbelly of society, the lost people, yeah. the ones that, that, I've got enough respect that when they go out on the roads that they could talk to a group of brothers on road. Yeah, 100%. Fearlessly. 
and 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 know that the youths will respond to them. Um, and 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 I think one of the things that need to be done is that we create this because unless we go out yeah. on the streets, unless we start talking to these brothers and changing this whole mindset, meeting them, meeting them where they are, going to the estates where a man's caught you, going to Peckham Estates, Hackney, wherever, yeah, and start reasoning with man's, like, really getting real and hands dirty. I'm like, down, I'm down. I want to oh, keep going into schools, but I want to go in the estates now. Yeah. I want to go where where the man, them, the olders are telling me, hey, what? Because I ain't trying to, I'm not stopping you from getting on your grind. You want to hustle, do your hustle. But you know what? I want to stop got children so being killed. Skills. They got transferable skills, man. The but all day long, I use my own. I use my own, bro. You get me? But That's how I learn. These men that are drug dealers, somebody. these men that are drug dealers can run big companies, bro. They've got the skills. Change the product. That's all they need to do. You just 100%. got the products all wrong. And if you, you know love it that I'm about, I'm about I'm about building up people around me. I like to make my people feel special. Meet people around yeah. you feel special. Ask your friend for his autograph. Don't wait for him to turn famous. That's Ask it. For his autograph now. Make him feel yeah. famous. Like let's create our own. Like let me uh, let me bring there it down to you. Yeah, this is what we do. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I've joined, joined the community called Creps on Creps UK. Yeah. Yep. So basically, what we do, we're a sneaker community. Right, and through the sneaker community, we've met so many good people that are that share a passion with us, and it's made me meet so many new people. I've done another thing in life in lockdown. I started yeah. skating. I met new people, nah, really, bro. really good people. I yeah? saw a youth skating today. I said that is the day where I saw youth used to have fun. Yeah. Like, bro, listen, there's pa you have to have passion in your life. Yeah, look, look at my yeah. Thing. yeah? this is my affirmation. I am yeah. confident and able to achieve any task I put my mind to. Yeah. I believe yeah. in myself. I attract successful people. I have love in my life. I am successful. I'm birthing yeah. positive energy. I'm going to have everything I want in my life. I will achieve all my mm -hmm. goals. I won't let my emotions make me fumble. The marathon yeah. continues, yeah? you got to have your little routine. That's my comp like my little business that I started, the sweetest punch. That's sneakers and trims, because basically I'm a barber, but obviously I, I, I do the sneakers thing as well. So sneakers and trims, yeah. that's my Instagram. But yeah, yeah. We, do the, we do the. You got if you've got a passion in life, you'll meet better people. If you've got no passion in life, you'll meet you'll meet people that don't have no passion. You need to be passionate about something to meet passionate That's people. You you draw your own energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to, like until I got into the sneakers thing two two years ago, I never met all these people. I could say to you, I was getting maybe thirty likes a picture. Since I've yeah. met the community and stuff, they show so much love. I get maybe like 130 likes now because nice. it's the community. And we're, but it's not, I don't rely on likes, but it's organic. No, I feel organic. Everything's organic. I never pay for followers. Yeah. It's just, we share a thing. It's like, yo, sneaks, we say, right. we, got a, we got a link up today. You come in, you go there, yeah. you meet up with good people, you talk about trainers. It's good for your mental health. We do lives, we nice. show our trainers on the lives. But nice. find something to be a part of. If you're sat at home smoking weed all day, and you're meeting people that are smoking weed. That's all you're ever gonna do. That's all you're yeah, ever you're gonna, gonna do. You're gonna meet people that smoke weed. You're gonna and listen. Misery. What's the word? Misery. Um. Love the company. All oh, right, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Feel me. So, so you're always gonna have those people coming around you, like you know what I'm saying. And when you're a person that's got a good heart, you've got a filter where you give your energy, because you can yes. be giving your energy here, there, everything. Then you ain't got nothing left. Sometimes mm. there's people that you know that need help, but you can't give them your help today. So you give it to God, you say, God, I beg you look after him tonight, please. Yeah. I've, got, I've got to stay, I've got to keep this energy for me. I've got to recuperate. Yeah. Like I say, I've got to put my jazz on. I've got to do my little bath with the candles and re-energize. Re, re and another thing I'll teach you people is take your shoes and socks off, walk on the grass, walk on the concrete. It's called grounding and earthing. It releases all it's the- It's um, it? It releases all the energy that you've built up, the static energy, yeah? So you go outside, you, because listen, People that don't wear shoes are mad connected to the earth. If you notice, people that live in other countries, they, they don't wear shoes. They know about the land. They can freaking tell you about poisonous plants. They can get... We're, how many people on there know how to kill a chicken, gut it, skin it, and eat it? None of us. Probably about three of us. Some of us, if you've been to the Caribbean. All we know about is Tesco's. You know why? Because your foot is connected to the ground. Yeah? I don't want to talk to reckless, but trust me, ground... My bitches know, so I'm all right. <laughs> you feel me? Trust 
yeah, man. Like that, Brother, man. I love it. it. Help you to sort your mental I love health, your man. vibe. Yeah, yeah, I love your vibe. It took a long, it took a long time. I got so for you to, to get to this point. Yeah, it, took a, it took a long time. Yeah, I know you have, bro. Bro, I'm still in a dark place. I'm still in a dark place. Don't get it twisted, but... Yeah, but yeah, you're bro. growing, bro. But then you're growing. growing. Bro. I do things like burn Palo Santo. I try to keep the energy in my house pure. So I'll tell you what you do. I'll tell you what you do, King. You've connected yourself with more good energy, okay? That's it, man. Everything happened on this life for a reason. You don't know who needed to hear me. Of course. I saw your live, yeah? And I thought, you know Sweet. what? I was even in airplane mode. And I saw the live. And I thought, you know yeah. what? To come out of airplane mode and jump in there. And who knows what we've done for someone tonight, bro? Exactly. Exactly, brother. Only God to just let... Yeah, let the natural vibe flow. And I'd like to actually meet you up. No, definitely. I'd like, to, I'd like, to, I'd like to, uh, to give you a platform where you can actually see the effects of just sharing your struggle uh, yeah, with your I'll, I'll, I'll come to the estates with you. I'll go Peckham. I'll go Bricks. I'll go there anyway. There you go. I'm, I'm all, there organic you go. youth. Like, see when Grenfell burnt down, yeah, and everyone was crowding yeah. and taking pictures. Do you know yeah. the first thing I yeah. did? I went up to yeah. the local gangs in the area, not all of them, I just whoever I saw, I said, man them, I'm not from around here. Obviously, I've come to show my respect. I yeah. know how it must feel for you, bear foreigners in your town, but yeah. you have to show love to people. That's their, yeah. that, like, that's their village. Like, if it was Africa, that's their, that's their patch. Yeah. You have to show respect to people. You can't go up in a man's spot and go, what are you man say? Man, what man comes to yeah, that? The, have respect. Yeah, whole, it's not a pussy thing, it's respect. Yeah, it's the whole love. world. You the whole world know. came down into their ends. Yeah, and they're thinking, bro, who's this? Who's that? Who's that? And you got to say to a man, you know what, brother? I know exactly what you're thinking. You know, you're thinking, who's this? Do you, who's do you know what as well, yeah? Do you know what as well? Let me share something with you. We also have to start looking at what we take as ownership and take the ownership that God gave us. He didn't give us uh, a state. He gave us the world. We need to open our minds, bro. Like, so, so these are some of the things where my mind is my. I have a, I have a mind of the world. My mind is big. It's huge. Yeah, that yeah. makes my vision huge. That makes my ideas huge. When my mind is in an estate, my ideas are small. My vision is small. Everything's small. And I was presented with the world. It's okay. yours. Go and have dominion over it. That's, that was what was given to me by my designer. Have dominion over it. For real. Subdue it. Yours. Yes, subdue it. So that means everything that I can create here in my mind, I can bring into reality. Yeah, definitely. So we need to take the mindset of just the streets out of these children and take them out but, there. But through yeah. gentrification, we've seen that that doesn't even mean anything. Because unless you own something, they can just tell you that you need to go. Or raise the rent, you can't afford it, and then you're going to go anyway. Do you know what I mean? And then all that postcode yeah. stuff doesn't even mean anything because you're now, like, I don't live in E2 anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you're going to move out one day, bro. Like, you should move out. Yeah, it's postcode. It's just so letters can come to your yard. Yeah, like that's how to be the hood don't, don't the hood don't have love for you. You're gonna go to jail, and there's gonna be about two men that's gonna write to you, or one man that's gonna send you money. Like all these that's people, right. and then when you come outside, they're gonna be there with the bottle. You know why? Yeah, you're back. You're back in the life. They got another. Then they got another mm -hmm. guy that's on things that they know what you're like. They're just using. It's users. It's not even using. It's abusing. There's a difference between using and abusing, isn't it? We're so. Here so what I want to do is make yeah. sure that I run certain things by you. So, so DM me. Yeah, I'm going to DM, DM you. DM you, man, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I'll stay in touch because I want to make use of every individual that has great potential. Yeah. You know that you do. And, and has I great energy. I can teach Good. them how to cut hair. If you want to do like a day where, do you know what I mean? Beautiful. Like kids and teach them how to like cut hair. They might want to become barbers. We could do that. Like Excellent. You know, Excellent. I could bring up people that might be involved as well, you know what I mean? That might want yeah. to like that. So yeah. we'll, we'll bump heads anyway. I'll DM you. Thank right, you, man. Brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you no, for thank your you time. Thank you for letting me in, man. I'm Great, sneakers right, and trims. You know me, but my Instagram sneakers and trims. You feel me?
Yeah, that's great, bruv. Make, make sure you, you message me so I can keep this going, yeah? I'm you already, but I'm going to message you. Um, okay, beautiful. Um, beautiful. So at least I know it's you, yeah? 100%. Yeah. Through there. Yeah, peace out you know. to everyone in the, um, in, the, in the live. Yeah. Please follow my guy. And please support what he's doing. Uh, you know, we've got some real gems in the community and we don't even know it. Yeah, man. And if you love sneakers, we can, we can get you the sneakers that you want. All them Jordan ones that you can't get, we get you. We get it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll be on to you for all of that, brother. I want no, my sneakers. Man, we, we got you. We got you. What size are you? Ten. Uh, I got you, man. We'll look after you, man. Don't worry, man. Yeah, man. Bless you, man. Uh, take care Easy of you. Man. God bless, man. Yeah, man. Every time. Every time. Bless you. One love. Yeah, that was awesome. I love connecting. Uh, well done and thank you. Lovely ideas. Awesome. Yeah. Much love to everyone that was listening. You know, that was just um, just authentic in it. it. Just I just vibes in with you guys. I haven't, I haven't been on this for a while, so it was nice to vibe with you. And I've, I've missed doing the Sunday lives, but I definitely needed to break, have a chill out time. And it was great being in Yorkshire, a fishing golf and this sunday live is going to be about burnout so uh let's hit it link me back up 7 p.m sunday uh on my brother's birthday as well oh gosh let me see how that works maybe we could do the sunday live in the park that'd be nice because then it's about burnout so it fits god bless you guys i salute you amazing combo brothers yeah love we need some more of these uh amazing convos with the brothers um and let's do this i'm going to keep you posted with my plans and what i'm going to do because I, I can't take the children killing each other no more so i'll keep you posted guys i love people love everyone that came on and bless you have an awesome friday evening i'm going to go and hug up my wife now i really miss her i've been sitting in the car for about three hours no make, make that yeah about three hours well wow. Take care, guys. Love you guys.